Hello, class. Welcome to week five for Youth Men 302 online. And um, I'm excited about this lesson. What we're going to be doing this week is we're going to be continuing our our thought from uh, from last week. We're, we're focusing on the Word of God and the power of the Word of God um, in our teaching and preaching. And, and today it's all about excellence, excellence and the way that we the way that we communicate the message and the way that we prepare the message. God is in those details. I, I would go so far to say that the the bulk um, of of your ministry. Uh, is going to come from the relationships that you make with other people. We're talking about loving each other and serving alongside of each other. But then there's the facet that that you are before them preaching and teaching the Word of God. And the Word of God is what changes a student's life forever, whether that's on the mission field, um, on a youth trip, uh, an event, um, or uh, during a Wednesday night message. You know, the Word of God is going to be what changes their life forever. So we should spend a little extra time in preparing our, our, our lessons, our content, and, and being sure that um, we're doing the best we can to be clear, um, to be clear, but also to, to do it well um, and to do it right. I, I, so I, uh, last week I talked about some commitments that you should make as a, as a teacher, as a preacher. Um, today, we're gonna focus on some mechanics um, of communicating truth. I want you to think about these words from, from J.D. Greer a former Southern Baptist uh, Convention president, pastor at Summit Church, uh, he wrote in Gaining by Losing, you cannot preach the gospel without words. The gospel is an explanation of an act that occurred in history once and for all. We testify through words that Jesus did for, did for us what we could not do for ourselves by living the life we should have lived and dying the death we should have died in our place so that others can believe that message, end quote. Um, so, so understanding that faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of God. We we know that uh, we know that Paul, the apostle Paul said how he said how beautiful are the feet of those who bring um, good news, and that's what we're doing as a messenger of the truth. We are bringing great news to our students each and every week, and and so we should be encouraging them uh, to come and to hear and to to lead others to come and hear the the, the gospel. Um, and the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. So today, I'm just going to focus for a few minutes on some mechanics uh, in communicating the truth. A uh, few, to, few to keep uh, in mind, okay? Um, we need to preach with purpose and, and to preach on purpose. And so I'm going to give you um, just a, a few points that go with that, that word purpose, and you'll find that the, the letters spell out uh, the word. Um, so, so I don't know your process, by which you prepare messages. I, for one, have a process by which I do. Um, I do a message and uh, I preach multiple times a week. So um, I'm, I'm having to stick to a pretty strict schedule on how I how I prepare and how I methodically work through a text. And so I, I haven't changed uh, a bit on how I do it. Um, uh, maybe maybe you have a process by which you prepare a lesson that you would like to share with us on a discussion forum. That would be awesome. Uh, but here's how here's how I do it. And here's how I've been taught to do it. Um, uh, and maybe this will encourage you uh, as well. You'll find that you do similar things. Um, one is you prayerfully choose a, a biblical subject. You prayerfully choose a biblical subject. And, and um, I, I know that, uh, I know that uh, you, can, you can preach on any topic, uh, but listen, listen, it's gonna be best if you pray through that decision. Um, you should, you should prepare your messages and, and choose your messages based on uh, where, of course, the Lord's leading your heart to go, but also you need to see and, and know what God is doing in the lives of your people, too, um, uh, and that's where, that's where I am. Uh, that's how I prepare messages. Uh, this week, I preach at Fruitland and Chapel, and um, I'm very much so convinced that I need to, to take a few weeks when, I, when I'll have opportunities over these next few quarters I want to preach through Matthew 18 to our to our student body um, at Fruitland College, and and I know that is the case because I would love to encourage our our, our young men and young women um, to be kingdom minded, and and to be reminded of of what it what it's all about. You know, being a child of the King, uh, children of the kingdom, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna be preaching through Matthew 18 to our students there at Fruitland. But the Lord put that on my heart, and I feel like it's something that. Uh, we should work through together, and, and so I'm going to take my time doing it. Again, I prayed through that, um, and, and, I, and I hope that you would do the same. 
uh, it, it, I get a little upset. Uh, that that's a strong word, but I uh, maybe irritate is the best. When um, when you just use curriculum and you don't really pray about and think about what you're communicating, what you're teaching, how does it apply? Um, you need to be sensitive to God's spirit in that. If the lesson content doesn't fit uh, your church or doesn't fit your youth group or doesn't fit where they are, you can always uh, you can always call an audible and go where God's leading you to teach and preach. Um, I, I I know I teach that way and preach that way. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna choose something based on a uh, based on a quarterly. Um, uh, I'm gonna choose my themes and I'm gonna pray through my themes and I'm gonna prepare lessons and messages uh, uh, based on where our church is. So you're not gonna get a lot of reruns with me when it comes to teaching and preaching. Uh, I'm trying my best to uh, to stay grounded and, and to be listening to what God's leading us to do. And uh, I'm certainly gonna be choosing, I'm gonna be choosing uh, uh, text based on where we are. So prayerfully choose a biblical subject, all right? Um, another thing is uncover the central theme. So when you're studying through a text, uh, what is the main idea at Fruitland? Um, I believe it's an homiletics class. They, they teach that as the CIT, the central idea of the text. What is the central theme of the text? What is the main message of the text? All right. And, and then, and then um, you've got to refine your objective. What, what am I wanting to accomplish with this message? A lot of times, a lot of times that's going to come through a keyword. Um, uh, yesterday, yesterday, um, I, I talked about, uh, let's see, I was talking about worship wars and I talked about some encouragements and some discouragements. The key word, the key word uh, was, was uh, encouragements. And then the next one was discouragements. That's the central idea of the text, you know, refining your objective, uh, keeping in with the theme of the text, uh, keeping things in context. The letter P, prepare your points. So um, uh, I know that you can honestly uh, you can get lost in the preparation of points you can get lost in making sure that all of your your words are alliterated or your points are alliterated and that every point has a sub point that kind of thing and that's great homiletics and, and you know what i'm not i'm certainly not knocking that process i just don't want you to get lost in that um, refine your point refine your objective and then prepare your points what do you want your students to learn is there two things that you can get out of this text is there one thing is there six things uh, is so so I'm just asking you to you know prepare your points make sure they're parallel with the text and make sure they go with your theme uh, but the alliteration is great uh, but but that is not necessary okay that's not necessary uh, and then the letter O open your students eyes you're gonna have to experiment with different ways to open their eyes to the truth that's being communicated and and that may come through illustration that may come through object lesson that may come through personal story testimony a video, a skit, um, uh, I just find a way to open your students' eyes. And I'm talking about from point to point. Uh, I'm, I love using illustrations. Um, I really am a fan of someone like, like Tony Evans or J.D. Greer or Charles Swindoll. They're really good at telling stories. And, and so I love to draw from those guys. And I love their, their books on illustrations and anecdotes and things like that. Uh, that's how I communicate, though. I'm, I'm most likely going to start a message with a story. I'm going to start a message with uh, with an example. Like yesterday's message, I shared an illustration of my time at a uh, at, at a trampoline park over the weekend. Some things that I learned about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, right there on the obstacle course of the of the uh, trampoline park. And you know what? It it came home. You know, you could tell that people connected well with that point. Open your students' eyes. Uh, the letter S, search out other resources. This should be secondary, by the way, um, to your study time in the Word of God. We are uh, definitely in a, in a day where plagiarism is a real thing, and um, whether it's advertent or not, it's not up to us. I just know it's something that uh, is being talked about a lot in preacher circles, you know, uh, using too much of somebody else's message or using too much of somebody's study and I, I know that there's nothing new under the sun. I know that there is no original thought, uh, but we want it to be original with us. And, and so that's going to take us spending time in God's word and hearing from the Lord first on what he, what direction he wants us to go in and how he wants us to learn from the text. And so search out other resources. I mean, sure, you can use different commentaries and different studies and book studies, things like that. 
Um, but I, I'm encouraging you to search out the other resources after you've spent time with the Lord yourself. Letter E is evaluate the uh, the message, and I'm going to give you a few ways to do that. Um, uh, one, you need to ask: Has my has my objective uh, been written clearly? Um, what am I wanting to accomplish with this message today? What am I wanting to accomplish in this text? Uh, are my are my points tied to the keyword in my objective? Um, you know, that's just making sure that your points are parallel with the text. Am I covering too much material? Now, now that is if I don't, I'm not a great preacher. I'm just going to tell you that. Like I don't I don't think that I am. Um, uh, I got a lot of work work to do and improvement to do. But I will say this: I have learned over the years in in ministry. Uh, especially long-term ministry where you've been somewhere for, you know, like I've been here for the better part of a decade. So I've learned over time that um, uh, you can, you can overdo it when it comes to content. Uh, so, so am I covering too much uh, it, scripture? Am I covering too much content? Um, that, that may be an issue. So, so if you're covering too much, uh, and I'm talking about time, I'm talking about attention spans. I, I mean, I'm covering all of that stuff. Uh, I notice in the quarterlies, man, we can cover a huge text uh, and, and, and have plenty of material for weeks if we wanted to. Um, so you need to ask, am I, am I really doing too much? Yesterday, I mean, I'm just going back to my sermon yesterday. I, I preached uh, for 45 minutes. And I covered three verses, and and that was the second part of a message I started the week before, in First John chapter two. You see what I'm saying? Take your time and and ask, can they handle this much information in one setting? Can they handle this much information in one sermon? Um, and it's okay, you know, if the Lord tarries, uh, you'll get a second chance the next week um, to 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 finish the text or to finish the message or Wednesday night or Sunday night to finish your thought. So please, uh, please work through the text, um, uh, but but don't give so much content that it's like drinking from a from a fire hydrant. I was I was told just last week that uh, you only retain about seven percent of what you're taking in, anyways. And so what what seven percent do you want them to do you want them to take in? So am I covering too much uh, scripture? A am I am I passionate uh, about what I'm going to communicate? That's a huge question. Um, uh, am, am I passionate with with what I'm about to communicate? Uh, do you do you have joy in what you're preaching? Are you excited about what you're preaching and teaching? Uh, because I've said last week, like if you're not if you're not excited about it, uh, they're not going to be excited about it. So so please be pumped to preach the word. I I told our, our one of our guys yesterday coming into the church. I said I am excited about this message, and and, and I hope that I showed that in my preaching. Um, so, so am I excited? Am I passionate about what I'm about to communicate? Uh, and, and so, and so, um, I'm just, I just want you to to make sure that you're consistent with the scripture, making sure you're not covering too much material, um, uh, staying in context. All of those things matter. Those are simple mechanics with teaching and preaching the Word of God. Now, here's your challenge this week uh, for your discussion board forum. I would love to see and hear. Uh, you share about how you prepare a message. I would love to see and share here uh, hear how you would present a message. And, and maybe you want to give us an outline this week, or maybe you want to go on uh, YouTube and make a video and, and give us a, a little snippet of you teaching or preaching a lesson. lesson. Now, maybe you've got a link that you want to share of you teaching and preaching a message. I mean, that would be great to see. I encourage you uh, to be creative with your discussion board forum this week. Uh, we will try to meet for Zoom on Thursday right now. Um, one o'clock is looking like our goal uh, for our class to meet together. So um, if something changes, I'll be sure to let you know, but we're going to try to meet at one o'clock for that. And then you've got a midterm this week uh, that I want you to take. Uh, I know you'll do a great job with it, um, but enjoy class this week. Uh, be excited about the word of God. If you've got opportunities to preach and teach, praying for you in that. Um, just uplift the name of Jesus, glorify him as you, as you serve. And I I'll see you come week six. You take care.